Hey there guys, my Shrek 64 here, and today I'm going to be making part 1 to how to make a Shrek 2 map. Now, we're going to be going down to the real, real basic stuff. Before you start doing literally anything in this editor, you have to know how to make a box. And if you can't make that box, you can't get anywhere with this editor, I guarantee you. So, let's start off with it. So as we can see, we are in the editor. Now, here's how you're going to want to move around. You hold down uh, left click to move around on the X and Y plane, I believe. I could be wrong on that. If you want to look around, you hold down right click. This allows you to look around anywhere, but you can't move while doing that. And if you want to move up and down, you hold both right mouse and left mouse at the exact same time. And this allows you to move up and down. So with all of these controls at your disposal for moving around the viewport, or for moving around in the perspective viewport, you should be fine for any sort of like very detailed edits. Right. Now, while that may sound very janky, it actually, uh, I swear, it only took me about a week or two, and all of a sudden, this felt like super intuitive. Just trust me on that. It will eventually become very intuitive. Anyway, let's actually start with the levels. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna come over here, and there's a cube tool right here. So all you're gonna wanna do, literally right click on this, and you'll see that this little menu pops up. Now right here, uh, we are essentially building a cube. Now, before I explain what this cube builder tool is going to be used for, you need to know something about Unreal Engine 2. In this level editor, you are carving out the infinite. You are not adding it into the infinite. So you're always going to be subtracting to add, and if you add, you're subtracting, if that makes much sense. It'll eventually make sense to you at some point, but when you're just starting out, it'll probably confuse you a lot. Anyway, let's build a cube. I would suggest doing a 1024 by 1024 cube. I'm just gonna copy and paste that. So it's just, it just does it super easily. And then click build. Now you might've noticed it just put something up here. Also, you can move around here, but this, this is pretty self-explanatory. You literally just use left mouse to move around and the scroll wheel if you wanna zoom in and out. It's pretty simple. But as you can see, we have our cube. Now I actually don't like where that cube got positioned. You generally want it to be above the blue lines because if you build too far down, the level will just straight up kill you. So in order to compensate for this, we're gonna be clicking on this. Now here is how you wanna move up. So to move up, there's two ways you can do this. You can either come over here and just simply control click and then just move the mouse wherever you want. I don't know why my grid is on four. I'm gonna change it to 16, so it makes it super easy to modify the map. You should do that too if it's not already in 16, do that. You can either drag it up like this or you can come over here in this viewport. So similar how you hold down the left mouse button and the right mouse button to move up and down. You can also do that while holding control to move a cube up just like you would. And if you hold shift while doing that, you your camera will follow where you're dragging, which is very helpful. Anyway, now that we have the cube where we want it to, we're gonna wanna go over here and click subtract. We have now subtracted a room into the world. Now, this room is actually pretty big for Shrek 2. This is about the size of the first room in Factory. Now the next thing we want to do, all these textures here are just what I like to call the null textures or the, the textures that aren't textures, something along those lines. You want to try to avoid using these ever because if you do have these in your level, you're going to get build errors. You really want to try to avoid build errors. Now that we're here though, we want to go up to the texture browser. We can click on this and from this point, you're going to want to click on this. So as you can see, now we're looking at a bunch of textures. Fortunately, they label them pretty well, so you know pretty much exactly what every single texture pack is from, because essentially all these are just texture packs. So if we're going for an indoor level, we probably want to go for something like this. These two right here, by the way, have nothing in them, so don't bother with them. So I'm just going to open up this, double click. As you can see, some textures are in here, so we're going to want to maximize the window and click here because for some reason... It never, like, it doesn't show that by default for the most part. I don't know why. This will make sure that anything that you assign to a group will be shown. So there will be no hidden textures. As you can see, here are all the textures. Amazing. Now, I'm going to be using this texture, even though this is probably not a great texture. I'm going to be using it anyway. So you simply click on that. But you'll probably notice uh, nothing actually got selected. So what we're going to want to do, we're actually going to want to select all these textures. So by control clicking, while clicking on the surface, it will select the surface. Now instead of clicking all the other surfaces, you just simply do Shift B, 
This will select every single surface that is related to the one brush that you put down. If you're confused about that, if you come up here and you, and you press B, it'll toggle off uh, this box right here. This is your, this is essentially your sculpting box in a way. So that box, it's only relevant to the level editor and that's it. Right here, you can see that this is, that this brush is being represented by a yellow box. As you can see, now it's invisible. I don't have the real time preview on. If I were to click on this, then anytime I make a change up here, as you can see, it changes down there. It's helpful, but if you start adding uh, ambience into your map, you're gonna start getting a lot of static in your ears. And personally, I don't like that. So I usually don't have this on. We'll get into why you get static in your ears way later down the line, but that doesn't really matter. The main point is I just unselected all my surfaces. Okay, well, that's super simple. As you can see, you literally just do it in like, like a single second. After that, go back to here. And as I've already shown you, click on the texture. It doesn't matter what texture you click on in here, but for the most part, always avoid uh, trying to use any sort of transparent texture such as you know like this right here like this you do not want to use you're literally gonna have an acid trip in your map just don't do it but anyway now that we've selected that if we minimize this as you can see we have a awful looking interior I really don't like that I'm gonna change that to something else that's like bearable let's switch it to this yeah hey, look at that it's kind of bearable now we have this but how do we end up playing the map? Well, I'm glad that you asked that because that's what we're going to try to do from this point. And you might notice that everything doesn't have a uh, lighting. So we really need to place down lighting. Now lighting is super simple. Just simply right click. It's gonna pull up all this. Is This is all of the default stuff that'll appear except for this. So you'll notice that it has uh, add karma actor, add static mesh, add path node, player start and light. And as this might suggest, you're gonna to wanna to click on that. Now you have a light in your map. Now if we come up here and build all, as you can see, it is placed down the light. We can move it. Of course, this is kind of a dark level. So yeah, we're gonna to need to fix that. Now a good rule of thumb is that when you're making lights, you're going to want to try to make sort of like an X pattern on the ceiling. This is to avoid any sort of like black areas that you might encounter in your level. Now I would modify these lights here to make them brighter and then start copying and pasting them. But for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna be showing you how you can select multiple things and then edit the properties of all that. So as you can see, we have our five lights up in here. So as I've shown you with control click, literally just control click all these. Oh, I should mention when you're selecting textures, I, I, I believe I literally said control click on that but you only do that if you're selecting multiple surfaces. But but for what I uh, do, usually I'm selecting multiple surfaces. Uh, I'm not just gonna select one surface and then deselect that surface to select to another surface, which you would do if you're just normally clicking. But I usually don't have to do that, but I assume that most people will. So as you can see, our ceiling is not looking correct at all. Essentially what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to move the light here until it makes the level look somewhat normal. So I think right around here is a good spot to do it. Now you'll notice that it still kind of looks weird down here. So we need to edit the properties. We could do this by simply right clicking on this, clicking light properties, and here is a freaking window. Now you might be asking me, what the heck do I do? Here is literally all you need to focus on is lighting and lighting color, all right? So as you can see right here, we have a bunch of properties. Don't worry about any of these for now. The only thing you really need to worry about uh, is the light radius, the light saturation, the light hue, and the light brightness. That's literally all you need to worry about. Now, all we're going to want to do, we need to make this a little bit brighter. So let's just simply increase this to 128. Try to make it divisible by two if you can. You can tell that kind of looks like garbage. Let's try rebuilding the level and say that makes it look better. It really doesn't. So we really need to work on that. We can always attempt to increase the radius and decrease the brightness. I didn't decrease it. What does that make it look like? Okay, this doesn't actually look bad, so we're gonna keep it out of this for now. So yeah, now we have all this. I just now realized that this is kind of in the way of you guys uh, looking at the level, so I'm just gonna do that. I'm used to having stuff blocking me all the freaking time, so it doesn't really affect me, but I know it'll affect you guys, but you guys will probably get used to it eventually. All right, now we need to add something that is, oh, I'm just gonna close this, something that is called a player start. You have to have this in your level. If you do not have this in your level, you can't play it it's literally impossible to play it. So just put this somewhere close to your player. And now, while you might think you could just play the level now, you actually can't. So what we're going to want to do, we're gonna to wanna to come over here to the 
actor class browser this is a very very freaking important tab you need to learn this thing huh? and by learn this thing i mean learn how to navigate it because no wonder made it so awful to navigate it's not even funny Right, so here is literally every single actor in the entire Shrek 2 game. Now you might be asking me, for one, what the frick is an actor? And two, why are there like only like 20, 30 things here? I'm going to answer both of those, alright? Alright, so an actor in Shrek 2 is anything that has code assigned to it. So you can think of a coin as an actor. It has code that, you know, causes stuff to happen. All the breakable objects, those are actors. All of the players, those are actors. Any sort of like light, that's also an actor. And you might be able to get the point by this point, so I'm gonna stop talking about it. But the main point is that we need to put in Shrek. If Shrek is not in the map, the map is impossible to play. So we need to get around to that. Now before we do that, I'm also gonna answer the question of why there's only like 20, 30 things visible when there should be a lot more. And the answer to that is that, well, the answer to that is that they collapsed quite a lot of the actors. If we start clicking on any of these, you'll notice that it starts opening up to a lot of other stuff. See, there's a lot of freaking stuff in here. You won't believe me on this. I'm not sure how much the editor shows, but there are 1,300 actors in total in the game. Now, most of those you don't actually place, so it's probably somewhere close to the 300 to 400 mark. But yeah, that's quite a lot of stuff that you could place in your level. And every single one of these you need to place very carefully, because if you don't, you're going to make a trash level, and I'm going to hate it, probably. I'm just kidding. It's fine if you make a few trash levels. That's what I did first. So anyway, we're going to want to click on Pawn. Then KW Pawn Native, then KW Pawn, then SH Pawn, SH Character, SH Hero Pawn. And as you can see, we have now gotten to all of the players. Here's the main thing you have to know. You have to place down Shrek every time. The level has to have Shrek. The only exception to this is that it only has Donkey. It can't just have Puss in Boots. Like, you see what I'm saying? You have to have Shrek. And this is the reason why if you ever have, uh, like, uh, played around with Ghost Mode, aka Noclip, and Shrek 2, you'll notice that there's a lot of, like, invisible or hidden Shreks that are out of bounds completely. That's the reason that they're there, is so the freaking level can function. So anyway, click on Shrek. Now minimize this, and we're going to place them. So right-click, add Shrek. And as you can see, we have now placed down Shrek. Now, we need to move them around a little bit. There are two ways you could do this. First off, you need to actually select them. So we can either just do something as simple as Control, Move Shrek, like that. Or we could use the controls within the Perspective Viewport. Control and left click, we'll move them like this. And Control, right click, we'll move them like that. And then if you hold both, he goes up and down. But I've already shown that. Anyway, Shrek is now here. Now we need to make sure that he's level with the ground. Despite what his player model and the editor is going to show, he might not actually be completely on the ground. So in order to do that, we're going to right click on the perspective viewport, which is this one right here. Make sure you do it on this, not either of these other three viewports. Because if you do that, it's not going to help you much. So right click here. Actors, Radii, View. You should always have this view on if you're making any sort of levels. It's just simply the best view. And as you can see, he is not completely flush with the floor. So I'm just going to move him down just a little bit. He's not, he's still not completely flush, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, well now I just fixed it, but whatever. As you can see, Shrek is always going to be slightly in the floor, and that's usually going to be the case for almost every single other uh, player in the game. Make sure you don't put him too much under the floor, and also make sure you don't put him too much in the air. If you put him too much in the air, you're going to end up falling. It could introduce bugs into the start of your level. And if you put him too low, he'll probably just suffocate and break your eardrums. So now that we have this, we're going to just build the level again because why not it's always good to do that when your level starts getting really big the build times will take longer of course because there's a lot more stuff to do but in a box level this is just this is a stupidly easy level so now that we've done all that we're going to just simply save the level all right so now that we've opened up this you can see i have like a bunch of levels in here i have auto saves we're gonna name this level uh, uh youtube box because i can't think of anything else to name it now we're going to click save and now that's all done all right now what you're going to want to do is going to want to come over to your Unreal Engine 2 runtime directory. As you can see, I'm already here. We're going to take this, we're going to copy it. Now go to your Shrek 2 directory. Can't show you any of this, unfortunately. Now paste it in here. Now click on this. If you do not have this right here, you are going to start having some problems. You need to go into your Windows 10 settings and you need to toggle on view file extensions. If you don't know how to do that, just look it up. You need to know how to do this, though. So anyway, do that, enter. 
You want to change it? Yes, we do. Okay, cool. All right, now that we're here, and I should mention, if you don't have the console enabled, get that enabled. And if you don't know how to enable it, I'll probably put it as a comment in the comment section. So anyway, now we're going to want to click on this. Uh, just do whatever the frick. Just spam the space bar like you never have before. Now we're going to want to open up our map. Uh, space and then the map. Mine is YouTube box. So simply press enter. And if you've done everything correctly, you are going to now be inside of a box. As you can see, it's just a box map. There's not really much to it. But that doesn't really matter. The best part about all this is that you just now created your first Shrek 2 level, and you are now on the way to make better and greater Shrek 2 levels. Anyway, guys, see ya!